going to move on to our next session. As you know, in the other room, we've got a session on LI for social good. But in this room, we are going to have a session with one of the biggest rock stars at Carto. He's, he's one of the most fun people in the office. It's a real pleasure to work with him. He is our chief development officer, and he's going to be talking a little bit about the future of technology at Carto and what we're doing with product to go in a bit more detail to what Hatsore or Javier was talking about earlier. So let's welcome Sancha, Jorge Gomez Sancha to the stage. Someone told me you have to wait 10 seconds before you start a presentation, so everybody pays attention. That seemed to work. So, hello everyone. Before I get started, <clears throat> I want to uh, highlight something, which is um, everything you see here today, from the nice presentations, all of the decorations, uh, all of the details, the things that uh, speakers uh, are wearing. I'm not wearing one, I left it at home, but all of those things uh, have been uh, designed internally at Carto. The design team doesn't want to uh, um, uh, get an agency to do all of this work because it's very important uh, stuff for us and for them to uh, ensure that Carto and, uh, looks great and accompanies all of the efforts we're doing. And all of this event has been organized uh, internally by the marketing team at uh, Carto. So I wanted to ask you for a big round of applause for the marketing team and the design team at Carto, who's done a fantastic job. All right, so I'm Jorge Gomez Sancha. I'm Chief Development Officer um, at Carto. In theory, what that means is uh, I oversee uh, product development, uh, product management, and uh, product development uh, and design at Carto. In practice, my, what it means is that I can get away with not wearing a jacket today and that I can take credit for all of the amazing stuff that I'm going to tell you about today. Um, uh, that, that, you know, all of that stuff that I don't do and uh, the amazing team at Carto does. But anyway, uh, I, uh, that's not true, actually. I also take credit for other people's work. So let me get started. I was curious to think, you know, in a room full of location intelligence uh, experts, whether when I talk about Jon Snow, whether you think about this guy or you think about this guy. You think about this guy, right? Okay. That's what happens. That same thing happened to me. So this wouldn't be a Carto conference if we didn't speak about this guy and we showed this map. So this map is... Uh, Jon Snow's map, Jon Snow discovered that cholera, uh, thanks to this map in a, in a, in a uh, cholera outburst in, in uh, London, he discovered that it was not being uh, transmitted uh, over air or over any other way uh, other than water, thanks to this map where it shows all of the cases of um, cholera in, in black, in those little black stacks and uh, where the pumps were. And then investigating and asking questions, he figured it out by putting two different um, geographic data sets uh, uh, together and, uh, and finding the correlation. So um, if you, th that map is what, uh, when you go to Wikipedia and other places, it's referred to as location intelligence, as the first um, uh, instance of location intelligence. And this is a very good definition. Location intelligence or spatial intelligence is the process of deriving meaningful insight from geospatial data relationships to solve a particular problem. And I want to highlight some of these words which actually tie in perfectly to what we do at Carto. Process, meaningful insight, geospatial data relationships. So here's another example of a um, apparently simple a very insightful visualization um, uh, of a, you know, think of it as a modern instance of what we showed earlier. This is showing um, whether the impact of the L train, this is work by Mamata Akela, uh, our head of cartography, which is fantastic, and I just have ripped off all of our maps uh, for this presentation. And uh, what it's showing is whether, uh, you know, uh, whether the, uh, sorry, 
whether the uh, 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 shuttles that uh, the city of New York is uh, offering to um, cover for the closure of the L train in New York, whether it's you know, better to grab the shuttles. It's just five stations in the, in the L train that would reduce your commute time if you would get the shuttles, or if you would be better off by taking the A or the M lines um, uh, to, to get to Manhattan. And actually, this seems like a simple visualization, but there's quite a lot of uh, interesting uh, analysis and, and, and data behind it. Turns out, though, that it's even more complex than this, because uh, even if only all of, the, all, all of the people on those five stations would grab the shuttle, uh, they will have to build a new bridge in order to get all of those uh, shuttles over to, to Manhattan. This is another example. It's uh, another visualization that, at a glance, you can see uh, the percentage of income spent in, uh, in the United States to pay for rent. And, um, you know, it's, it's a big departure from a, a simple uh, visualization uh, like the Jon Snow one, but it's very insightful as well. Another one which is showing Airbnb and how many days uh, it takes for someone uh, 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 to, that is um, renting through Airbnb to pay their actual rent. So if they're doing Airbnb on rented places, how, much, how many days it would take them to pay rent. And it turns out that all of the ones in, in uh, clear colors, in, in uh, orange, um, uh, it takes them sometimes even uh, just under two days of Airbnb, uh, Airbnb rent to uh, pay for their rent, which means it's forcing, it's displacing the community and so on. So this is, uh, some, these are some examples of simple but insightful visualizations that are uh, good examples of location intelligence. If we go on with the definition, it says, involves layering multiple data sets, especially and or chronologically for easy reference on a map, and its applications span industries, categories, and organizations. And this is also talking, it talks to me about a lot of the things that um, uh, uh, Javier de la Torre, we call him Jatorre, um, um, was speaking about this morning, about solutions and about the things we can do in different industries to solve very specific problems. And here are a couple of examples of um, two solutions that are highly specialized, uh, very focused in solving very specific problems that are not just a simple visualization, but are used potentially by hundreds of people that are deriving different insights depending or the, on the type of user or uh, um, uh, you know, whether it's a manager or it's a salesperson. This is a sales analysis tool. This is SalesQuest. It's one of our solutions that um, uh, we are putting out there for uh, sales analysis. And this is a, um, um, sorry, I, I said the sales analysis. And this is a um, site, um, uh, look, site, I'm mixing the words now, sorry. <laughs> This is a, um, how do you, flow? help me. Site planning. site planning, thank you. This is a site planning tool uh, that we're also putting out, um, which uh, it's using uh, uh, different sets of data, like demographics, um, uh, points of interest, um, uh, credit card transactions, and also uh, different technologies like routing and ISO lines and things like that to figure out what are the where is the best place to put your uh, next shop, or what is the uh, shop that you should be closing if it's not performing well. This is also one of our solutions that I cannot reveal the name to yet, because it will be revealed at Carto New York in a couple of weeks. So basically, there are at two ends of a spectrum. Location intelligence can be anything in between a simple, insightful visualization and a highly specialized solution. So if you look at our products, we have Builder, our, ma our two main products, Builder and Engine. We have Builder, which, is, which starts from the visualization. It helps you solve um, geospatial problems in a very visual way. You can add analysis, you could create the map, you add analysis on top, and you start playing with the data and, until, uh, you, and you bring in external data until you come up with a um, uh, solution to your problem. And on the other side, we have Engine. Engine 
which powers Builder uh, as a platform. It's also enabling uh, all of our um, partners and customers to build applications and solutions through uh, uh, our APIs, our tool set, etc. So if you look at them, Builder comes from the simple, insightful visualization side. It starts by the visualization and goes on to solve more and more problems um, with uh, uh, using uh, generic tools. And you can produce a very good visualization that can be shared with people, and uh, you can generate insights out of them. Whereas Engine comes at the problem from the other side. It comes at the problem from, let's uh, enable our customers and partners to uh, build the highly specialized solution that they need, whether that's for multiple users uh, or for uh, different industries. We don't care. That's what Engine is uh, there for to enable. So what's in an LI app? So if you look up a simple location intelligence application, you start by, for instance, user authentication. So you need to have a way to uh, authenticate and identify the users that are logging into your application. You need a base map, normally, because you want to see the things in the context of a city or, uh, or a place. Um, already, these base maps, there's technology behind it in order to render it in, the, uh, in, a, in tiles in the server or to render it in your browser. Then there is external data. You need geometries to figure out what are the boundaries to the problem you're trying to solve. You have your data as well, which can be accidents or can be uh, instances of whatever you are trying to solve. You need to put that data somewhere, and you need to be able to access your data and analyze it in different ways to provide information in the interface that you're building, like a legend, for instance. You need also to be able to access external data that, um, um, and show it in the screen, like, uh, for instance, it's alerts and things like that. Widgets and filters. And you, know, you need all of these things to, uh, this is a basic. This is, and you haven't really started solving the specific problem you wanted to solve in the first place. So imagine you didn't have to worry about all of that. Imagine you could focus on solving your business problem. So that's Engine in 2018. That's our focus and our goal for 2018. This is, um, Engine is already a fantastic application, but we focused a lot in the technology. We focused a lot on, hey, let's enable uh, this, and let's enable you know, uh, a lot of things which we're still doing, and it's still core. But until now, we had not set the user at the center of the experience. Until now, um, we, uh, the, the center of the experience was around Builder. And we weren't thinking so much about you know, what is the experience of a developer or of a data scientist or of someone that uh, wants to solve problems um, in a very uh, specialized setting uh, where some of our other products like Builder uh, are not uh, uh, maybe enough for them. So, woof, I'm running super late. So I'm going to uh, hurry up. So basically, um, thank you. When we think about uh, what we need to, uh, in order to um, make uh, our customers, the engine customers, happier and more productive and able to do more faster, we think, well, you know, time to market is uh, important, so it's fine if the technology is great, but if they can't make it work fast enough and take advantage of it quickly and go to market quickly, then it's not good enough. Also, they need to be able to develop better and faster LI apps, not just it's a different thing. And then they need to be able to produce deeper insights. If uh, it's very beautiful and te technologically uh, very fast, but you can't uh, actually uh, show what's the uh, important insight that you want to derive in each case, then it's not good. So let's talk about the things that we're doing to address all of these things. Some of these things we just released, some of these things we're uh, working on and, and uh, announcing soon, and other things are still in its infancy. But I wanted to show today what are we thinking, how are we approaching um, this, um, 
um, effort that we're putting towards the new GIS that uh, Hattori was talking about, these new, pro these new ways to solve geospatial problems. So to develop LI apps faster, you need certain things. You need documentation and guidance, you need data management and APIs, and you need uh, libraries and ready-made components. So a few things about what, all of the things we're doing here. You heard about the documentation center. I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about it. It's there, carto.com slash developers. So please go check it out. There's a form in there. Uh, you know, try to build something, give us feedback. We really are very proud of the work we're doing here. I'm going to show you some screens. In this context of putting the user at the center, uh, we wanted to, uh, we started thinking as developers, how would we want to build uh, these things? And, um, you know, we wanted to see a clear view of all of the libraries, of all of the APIs as well. We wanted to be able to have good guides and good overviews and in, uh, introduction to each of the different things you can do with Engine. We wanted a full reference and we wanted interactive examples. So all of that's there in the, in the documentation center. So I encourage you to take a look and, and give us feedback. Improved imports in the area of data management and APIs. That's one of the things we're working on. Uh, we've heard more from our customers is, you know, it's great that you can do all of these things with the APIs, but if I can get my data in there quickly enough, then, um, uh, you know, I, I'm still not being able to develop this fast enough, and it's uh, uh, not helping me to deliver the solution. So if anyone knows Postgres in the audience, they'll recognize the uh, documentation from the copy uh, uh, command in, in Postgres. This is one of the things that the core technology team is working on, is providing a copy endpoint to take advantage of the copy functionality in Postgres, which is designed to ingest large amounts of data faster into the database. So that's one of the things we're working on. Um, we're also working on the uh, interface, interface side, which will benefit both engine and builder users to help um, define much better that import so that you don't, there's less errors and less mistakes, so you can define the import at the beginning. And um, all of these things uh, um, are being uh, worked on by our core technology team that focuses on all of the uh, uh, underlying technologies we use. We're also in libraries and ready-made components. Um, uh, Carto.js, Hattore talked about this. And um, the interesting thing here is it's a big departure from our previous Carto.js. When we start, the previous Carto.js was based on a, on a time that uh, it was, um, geospatial and uh, maps on the web were still relatively new. And it was very opinionated. It was trying to do a lot of things for uh, the developers. And so moving forward, people have learned to build maps and they want to have more flexibility in terms of uh, the libraries they use and uh, what do they want to interact with um, outside of, of Carto.js. So talking to partners, we uh, got from them that they wanted to be able to uh, have better access to the data behind all of the things that we're rendering on the screen. And there's been a big push um, on this. We've talked about Airship already. You've heard about this. I won't go into detail anymore. But I wanted to show you a quick video of how these two things work together seamlessly. So the widgets on the right-hand side are Airship widgets. And Carto.js is managing the uh, rendering of all of the tiles and the connection between what you're seeing in the map and what's happening with uh, the widgets. As you'll see, as you change a widget, the rest, both the map and the rest of the widgets uh, get adapted. Uh, adapt. So um, what we want to achieve with this is that if you're trying to solve a uh, highly specialized location intelligence problem, you don't have to think about all of this stuff. You can start with all of this stuff. There's, uh, it, it even has a night mode, as you can see. So, um, and it'll have uh, themes uh, coming forward. So this is very exciting. So we talked about improved imports, the developer center, Carto.js 4.0 and Airship as some of the examples of the things that we're working on as part of our uh, a strategy to help uh, developers and, and uh, data scientists be faster uh, with Carto. We also want these location intelligence apps to be better and faster. So, oops, a couple of things. This jumped like three slides. So, a couple of things. 
you need, in order for these, uh, uh, among, amongst other things, two very important things uh, you need to develop better and faster um, applications is performance and scalability, of course, they need to be fast. And you need um, authentication and authorization, they need to be secure, and they need to, you know, it's something also that uh, you just can't escape. So one of the examples uh, of uh, something we delivered um, at the beginning of this year is smart aggregations. Smart aggregations, uh, basically what it enables you to do using our Maps API is to render a lot more data in uh, a much, much uh, faster way. What it's doing is, if you have a lot of points, it's based on the notion that if you have uh, millions of points, there are only so many that can fit in a screen. And sometimes you get a lot of overlapping points. So this is doing all of the hard work for you to say, okay, all of these points that are one, stop, one on top of each other, I'm going to ensure that I only render one point with the uh, relative associated information that you need, and um, so that it has to deal with much less data, and whether you're doing raster, the rendering goes much faster, or you're doing vector, the much less information that you have to send to the customer. So all of the, or to the client, sorry. So all of this is uh, something that has uh, helped us improve the performance of, uh, of engine uh, significantly. This, shows, this is uh, intended to show how it works. The larger the resolution, the less points that you see, but you can, it's very flexible in how you can uh, use it to render your maps depending on, on the amount of data that you have. But um, uh, Raul Ochoa, our head of technology, will be talking about this uh, tomorrow. I encourage you to go to our technical blog in, in carto.com if you're interested about this and how it works and how we did it. There's a very nice blog post there. Vertical scalability. So what does that mean? In, it means two things. Um, uh, as um, many of you will know, Postgres is at the heart of, of, uh, of what we do at Carto. And recently, uh, Postgres has had huge improvements in terms of uh, performance, thanks to parallelization. So before, um, it was harder to run uh, the same, to split one single query into the database into uh, multiple, to, to, be, to take advantage of all of your CPUs um, to run uh, queries against large data sets in parallel with Postgres 10 that's available. So we've done a huge effort to migrate uh, our thousands of thousands of Postgres database applications to, um, uh, to Postgres 10. But not only that, that, that's in progress. You won't know it. Maybe you'll realize, maybe you won't. But uh, your application uh, is uh, in the background quietly getting faster and faster thanks to this. And also, um, we did a lot of effort to go through uh, our queries and how the APIs that our queries do to render widgets, to render the data views, to render uh, uh, tiles, to ensure that we were taking maximum advantage of this parallelization everywhere that we can. So that's helping us um, uh, improve our performance and, and scalability. There's a fantastic blog post about this as well. Uh, I wanted to give a shout out to the core team at, at Carto who've been, you know, they're the guys that just live in uh, C++ and compilation and, and the hard um, uh, technologies that uh, underlie a lot of what we do. Uh, Fine-grained authorization. So actually that's not performance and scalability, that's user authentication. But fine-grained authorization is another thing we've heard a lot about uh, from our customers is you know, um, how can I ensure that uh, I show only certain, uh, you know, that my data is uh, accessible to be viewed in a certain way, but only, but kind of be uh, written to or updated uh, through the APIs. So we've been, uh, uh, this week, we've released what we call the Auth API. The Auth API, it's sort of the broader name for fine grain authorization. And it allows you to do things like what you see in the image here, which is, I can select what data sets a specific API key has access to and, what, and through what APIs. Uh, so you might want to have a read-only uh, view of that. You might want to do it read-only through the maps and uh, uh, it, in some different combination through uh, SQL API. We've started with those because they are the ones that are the most used in, in, the, in, the, in the actual maps that go to, um, to, the, to the web but we're following it up with, with the rest of our, of our APIs. And then user authentication. This is a, something that we are, it's in its infancy right now, but we are bringing user authentication as well to Carto, meaning 
our customers, our partners, anyone developing applications with Engine will uh, and be able to use our own authentication um, to, um, uh, in their application so that you don't have to worry about setting up a, your own authentication. The interesting part, though, is how it combines with the fine-grained user authorization, though. The combination of these two things, basically, will enable us to do very interesting stuff. This is how it works classically in, uh, in, with Engine. You have the location intelligence application uh, at the bottom that it's talking to Carto to access and interact with data sets. And then somewhere else, user management uh, is taken care of, whether that's, you know, uh, uh, you build your own thing. We've even seen some partners that use our Postgres SQL, their instance of Carto through the SQL API to do a self-made um, user authentication. So the first, the simplest thing that you're going to be able to do is basically uh, uh, quickly enable user authentication in your application. Just let Carto take care of it, and then uh, you know uh, it will be transparent for the end users, but it gives you already uh, uh, a lot of functionality in order to go quicker and to have a safe and secure um, uh, user authentication system. But if you start thinking uh, in combination with the fine grain authorization, you'll be able to do things like this, which is have, um, a, uh, when you have an organization with several users, you'll be able to say, well, there's a certain set of data sets that my application needs to access for everyone, but then I want to have specific permissions for specific data sets and specific users. So. Imagine that it's a banking organization that wants to have uh, uh, you know, the same uh, application running for all of their uh, um, workforce, but they have different regions, for instance. And they have uh, a region in, uh, in the Canary Islands and a region in uh, different um, uh, autonomies or whatever. So they'll be able to run the same applications, but those applications will be accessing different data sets with different permissions. So, um, it, it opens up uh, the opportunity to uh, doing things like this. It also will be able to access data in a different Carto account. So you might have some um, uh, specific data that you want to make part of the application, and that will be possible as well. And m more importantly even is um, the access to data observatory and how um, we want to use uh, this to enable the same level of control so that you might want to uh, provide access to certain users to premium data sets that we'll be uh, providing through Data Observatory and have full control over how they're being used, how much, and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, have some metrics around it and understand how that data is becoming relevant um, uh, to you and, and to your application. So we've seen in terms of developing better and faster location intelligence apps, we've seen uh, smart aggregations, vertical scalability, fine grain authorization, and user authentication. OK, so what about produce deeper insights? So that's the name of the game, right? Is how, you know, how valuable is what you can derive of the, out of this application. So in order to produce really good insights, you need relevant and high quality data. Without that, it's very difficult. You also need analysis capabilities to make sense of all that data. And then you need the visualization capabilities as well. You need to be able to see it um, clearly and uh, in a way that uh, shows the right messages. So what are we doing on those areas? Location data streams. So this is the marketing term, uh, but Essentially, Hatorre was talking heavily about this this morning, so I won't go into it very much. If you want to know um, very uh, or more specific use cases, I encourage you to go to uh, Hannah, our data observatory product manager, and Wen Fei, one of our uh, data scientists, uh, talk, which will be tomorrow at 10:30. They'll go in uh, in detail into how we're starting to use this data. Uh, from some of the providers that um, uh, Javier was talking about this morning to solve uh, uh, real-world problems in a very new way, in a more up-to-date, uh, constantly updated way. The analysis framework. So this is something we've been talking about for, for a while. That's an image of, of Carta Frames, which uh, Javi talked about as well. And it's the combination of Carta Frames as a tool to... Um, uh, uh, do data science and use Carto to, uh, to, for data science, 
Um, but also, we're thinking, how can we make those analyses uh, usable from the uh, applications? And this is in its infancy as well, but we're uh, focusing on making ba basically two different uh, uh, types of analysis that, again, will be resources that you can have access to uh, in Carto uh, that are uh, either uh, what we call sort of batch analysis, analysis that run for a long time over uh, a period of data that you can schedule and, uh, uh, and plan, versus interactive or contextual analysis that you need to run when you're asked you're interacting with your application. So this is still early days, but it's a key piece to all of the things that we are enabling uh, uh, this year as part of our engine strategy. And lastly, but uh, not less importantly, visualization. So. This is something we're not announcing yet, but it's uh, uh, hugely important and hugely exciting to us. It's the sort of thing that developers uh, giggle around when someone makes a demo in the office because it's uh, incredibly exciting. Carto VL is the, uh, our vector uh, version of Carto JS. Like Carto JS allows you to build applications using raster technology. Carto VL will help you build applications with vector technology. And why it's vector important? For many reasons. But uh, performance is one of them, but uh, the capabilities it gives you in terms of um, uh, making engaging maps and insightful maps are excellent. In terms of uh, this enables animation, for instance, in the, in, the, uh, in the maps that you're seeing. So as things transition from one to the next, you'll be able to get a much better sense of what just happened. Or um, interactivity, because you have all of the information in your client, rather than having to go back to the server every time, then Vector enables you to uh, have a much richer, much um, snappy and, and uh, interesting interaction. So we've seen. Uh, these things for producing deeper insights, location data streams, analysis framework, and Carto VL. So that's engine in 2018. And I'm, uh, you know, the, the focus again, just to summarize, is uh, for us, we want this to be um, a, something that is not just an excellent uh, um, tool set and set of uh, and platform to build your location intelligence apps, but also uh, something that um, you know, developers and data uh, uh, scientists out there are super excited to use and find it a pleasure to use. So I'm going to leave you with something um, for a second, which is uh, a quick demo of how uh, of the types of things you'll be able to do with Carto VL. So here it goes.
Thank you.